Hello and welcome. This is a quick summary video comparing the effectiveness of low E glass and other types of RF shielding materials in their effectiveness. These are real world measurements I have taken for three different clients of various shielding products looking at their performance, what really happens in the world. My name is Michael Newert and I am an EMF engineer and electrician and consultant. We're going to be looking at shielding performance of these materials, um, measuring in uh, the percent reduction. You might notice if you're ever purchasing a shielding material um, from a company like Less EMF, for instance, they might say the materials are rated for 99.99% or 99.999%. It sounds like, wow, these are great. Is that really true? And yes, it can be true. You can get that kind of shielding effectiveness for a lot of the materials under idealized test conditions, but not usually under most real world conditions. So the testing I'm doing here is going to be a little more real world. Um, in the lab, in a perfect lab, you can do things that you can't do even, um, even myself. I don't have the equipment for. So these are more um, the results that you get in real conditions, not 99.99%. Um, typically, you will get in the range of 90 to 99% with good shielding materials. Um, and also, um, another way that um, you can measure the reduction is in units of dB, but we're not going to go into that into this, in this quick summary. So I've, I've done, um, gathered here um, the reports from three different clients over the last couple of years because they're kind of representative. This is one I did actually just a few days ago. Um, so it's relatively recent. And um, here we are looking at, um, I'm actually using um, five different kinds of test meters. And that's just, sometimes it's nice to see how different meters perform. So I do that every once in a while. Um, they all have their different, um, the gigahertz meter here is probably the best, but they all have their different levels of accuracy um, and sensitivity. Um, and we're going to be looking at the average of the first three meters. I'm looking at the average of the Acousta meter, the Safe and Sound Pro 2, and the Gigahertz Solutions meter, the professional meter. So looking at those, um, the average of those reductions. And um, the purpose for this client was to look at a sample of low E glass. Low E glass is a, um, a particular kind of modern glass, um, triple pane in this case, sometimes it's double pane. Um, and at least one of the layers of glass has a metal coating, and that's for um, low E massivity. That's what low E is for, stands for, and it has to do with the properties of allowing light through, but often holding back um, infrared, so you can retain heat better in a building, and also you can keep out heat um, in the summer, um, so you don't burn your air conditioning. So it's, it's energy efficient glass. Um, and because of that metal coating, those low E glasses often have fairly good shielding properties. And that's what we're testing here. So first, this sample of low E glass, this particular version, I measured 97.0% um, shielding effectiveness. Um, in other words, that was the reduction, 97%. That's pretty good. I usually find them in the range of 96, 97, 98%. So this was a glass that this looks good for this client. Because when you compare it to other materials, so in comparison, here's four layers of aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is a pretty good shield. Here we have not quite as good as the e-glass. We have 94.3%. And part of that is probably because the low e-glass typically is um, a silver coating, which is even better um, shielding effectiveness than aluminum. Um, and here we have a bronze window screen, something we often use in walls and, and for other kinds of shielding purposes, 96.5%, almost the same as the low E glass in this case, pretty good. And here is one layer of the high performance silver mesh fabric. That's a kind of a product we often use. It's a nylon mesh impregnated with silver, very good as a effective um, EMF shielding at windows, 98.3%. So of all these four materials tested, the um, silver mesh was the best shielding effective. But think of all of these, these are so close. Um, think of them as almost the same. The difference is in actual world effectiveness when you put this on a window um, in a room you're shielding, whatever choice you make, is more the other things like what also comes through the ceiling or through the wall or through another window or door 
or is there any gaps be, you know um, between the shielded glass the the low e coating in the glass and the in the wall the little gaps allow a lot of um, fields in so so these are sort of like relatively um, on more perfect conditions, not quite under lab conditions, but on very good conditions. These are the kind of shielding properties you can get by these materials. Also wanted to look at um, a, um, another source. The previous source for the ones we were just looking at was 2.4 gigahertz. And because it's, I use that often as a test um, frequency because it's a very common frequency. Self tower frequencies are fairly close to that. 2.4 gigahertz is used a lot. For this client, we also wanted to look at 5.8 gigahertz, another one of the Wi-Fi frequencies and a little higher frequencies. So in this case, you can see this low E glass. Um, we got a, a, a percent reduction of 92.8%. Um, not quite as good as we got in some of the glasses at the 2.4 gigahertz. I actually suspect that um, in the lab for all of these, if you took this in the lab, you'd probably get 99.9% .9 reduction under the perfect sort of setup conditions. And I'm guessing that in the setup I had here, a little bit of the 5.8 gigahertz was probably getting through because normally I actually get a little higher than that. But anything above 90 is actually pretty good in these kind of, um, um, uh, field tests like this. Um, so 92.8% for that low E glass for 5.8 gigahertz. Here's the aluminum foil, same thing with four layers, a little bit better in this case. And then here's the bronze window screen. And here a little bit worse in this case. But again, these are all almost the same. They're all in that 90 to 95% range that these are all fairly similar. I wouldn't think so much of the low E glass being better than the aluminum foil than being better than the bronze window screen. They're all sort of similar in their um, ability to shield and it'll depend more on the geometry, how much material there is, whether there's any gaps, that sort of thing. So here's another, here's an older, um, um, client report. This is exerted from a client report in 2016, and the RF source here is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signal. It's a similar setup to what we just looked at, but a little bit different. And every test is a is a little situation is a little different. So I don't compare these numbers percent reduction to the ones I just did exactly, but with the same setup, these are very comparable. So again. Here are three samples of low E glass. These are all from one company, but slightly different um, types um, that the uh, client was considering. And you can see here for the one case, we got 98.1% reduction, 98.5% reduction, 98.2% reduction. That's all quite good. Anything for these glasses, when you get like 97, 98, 99, you're doing, you're doing pretty good. And that's typically what a good low E glass will give me in these kind of tests. Um, then I try to, I wanted to also compare that low E glass to some of the other materials. Here we have the um, high performance silver mesh fabric. And you can see there 99.2%, even a little better than the low E glass, just like we got in the, for the other client we just talked about. Here's another fabric, copper taffeta shielding fabric. Sometimes we use that on windows when we don't need airflow or light to come through, almost like a blackout curtain. Um, and you can see here, same thing, 99.2% reduction. That's quite good. So that very good material for this purpose. And here's just another material, Shieldex Baltimore, um, a shielding fabric, kind of similar, another mesh that's nylon mesh with um, silver impregnation. Um, which this is a particular one that this one client material, this client wanted to use for some window shielding. And you can see here 99.1%, pretty much, you know, essentially the same as the high performance mesh and the copper taffeta. And then I wanted to compare it just like, what about your standard aluminum window screen, the kind of cheap material we sometimes use for shielding things. And look at that 98.9%. So, even slightly better than the low E glass, the standard aluminum window screen. And what about standard aluminum foil? In this case, almost as good, 98.6%. Um, so you can see these are all essentially the same. I wouldn't think of any of these materials as being much better than the other. All of these materials have very 
um, similar percent reductions almost within the experimental um, um, range of error anyways. So I would consider them, them the same and it would be more um, which one is best for aesthetic purposes or cost purposes. And again, the, the biggest thing that's gonna hurt your percent reduction is gonna be the geometry itself. Um, so depending on uh, like a like a window fabric over a window will often give you a better um, result than the low E glass because the low E glass is just the glass and you can have a little shielding gap between the glass and the wall. Um, and with a um, shielding mesh fabric for a window, you can have it cover the window plus even go like six inches in each direction past the window frame and you get better geometry. And so the, the real world result um, in that case for shielding a bedroom window, for instance, you can often get better reductions with a window curtain than you can with a um, low E glass. Although the actual, like we're showing here, the percent reduction of the actual material is very similar. It's the way it's used that can make the difference. And then one last thing, because it's very interesting is um, here for a client, we're looking at different building materials and seeing if we can even avoid the standard thing. So what I've done here layered, um, it's, it's listed here at the bottom from the, the least shielding effectiveness to the greatest shielding effectiveness. Standard materials, so look this, one layer of three quarter inch plywood, 51% for just a layer of plywood. Um, you've already brought the, uh, the radio frequencies down by a half. So building materials are effective to a certain level. Um, usually not 99% effective, but somewhat effective. Look, two layers of that same plywood, 53%. As you can see, the first layer did most of it. The second layer just gave you a little bit more. That's often typical for shielding too. The second layer, third layer doesn't necessarily give you much more. Here's a mortared brick wall. It's the brick wall, 65%. Um, here's just the plywood frame that we're gonna use to do the test with the water. Cause it's an interesting though, well, we're gonna be testing the shielding effectiveness of water for this client. And just that frame, that plywood frame, 65% already. And then here I did a, a standard sheetrock interior wall, like a um, wall inside the house where you have sheetrock on both sides. Look at that, 69% just by that wall. Here's, a, um, here's that same frame um, um, used that'll be holding the water. And all we've done is wetted it. We've just, we haven't even filled it yet. We've gone from, from when it was dry at 65.5%. Um, and then here we are at 70.5%, another 5% effectiveness just by having it wet. So you can see all these little things make a difference in shielding effectiveness. And here I have some loosely stacked um, concrete blocks. They're not mortared together, they're just stacked. And there we like, look at that 72%. Here we have a standard like exterior wall. In this case, there's a plywood um, T111 on the outside and regular sheetrock on the inside, 74% by that wall. Here we have a concrete block wall, um, uh, stucco on both sides. It's a hollow block wall, but you know, it's like what, 10 inches thick, um, 75, almost 76%. Here's just to see some aluminum. This is a car windshield shade where you have aluminum on one side. Look at that aluminum, that thing, like almost 92%. And now we're getting into some the water. Look at here, a three quarters of an inch thick of water in this device, 98.1%. Um, we're getting pretty good. Here's the, what if you had just one layer of aluminum window screen, 98.5%, see quite good. That's that range we get for the shielding materials and the e-glass. One layer of high performance mesh fabric, look at that, 98.7%, quite good. Um, but now what gets interesting, two and a quarter inches of water as a water wall, 99.3%. So once you start getting around two inches of water, you're getting more effectiveness than these fancy shielding materials like the performance mesh. Um, so you water can be effective. And there are people that actually line walls um, with, with big um, jugs of water um, um, to, um, and, and they find some relief from that. And then here, a five inch thick wall of water, 99.9%. I've probably never seen that in any of my other testing where I've ever in these kind of more um, rough field testing conditions um, gotten that kind of shielding effectiveness. I don't think I've ever gotten 99.9% .9 before, but I did here with the five inches of water wall.
So there you have some ideas about the different kinds of shielding materials, the relative effectiveness. What you can take away from this is most of the materials that are used, designed for shielding radio frequencies, um, or that we use like even like aluminum foil and window screens and things, they all have similar effectiveness, like with the low E glass also. They're usually in that range of 97, 98%, something like that. Um, it's very typical. And usually what material you use will not make nearly as much difference as how you use it. How much of the wall gets covered? Are there any gaps? Are there any EMFs leaking in from other places? Thank you for joining us today. For more information about training videos and courses with me, please visit us at emfcenter.com.